Five Nights at Freddy's is a series that has a lot of Easter eggs, and I mean a lot. I strongly believe that the mystery behind some of these Easter eggs is part of the reason why FNAF is so popular to this day. Well, alongside YouTubers, of course. Hey guys, I think the little man said he wants to give Fredbear a big kiss. Was that the bite of 87? There have been plenty of videos going over the various Easter eggs in FNAF before, so I won't bore you with every single detail that has probably been talked about a million times at this point. Instead, today we're gonna specifically go over the various secret characters in the FNAF series. What do I mean by secret character? Well, typically these are Easter egg characters that have a rare chance of showing up during the games they feature in. Some of them have lore relevance, some don't, but most of them are very cool and definitely worth talking about. In this video, I'm only gonna go over these games. No FNAF World because we just talked about that in the last video, and no Steel Wool games because I will probably do a follow-up to this video in the future whenever there is enough content to talk about with the Steel Wool games alone. So see you at FNAF 15 for that one. Alongside the canon secret characters, I'll also talk about some of the hoax secret characters. I definitely fell for some of these as a dumb, stupid kid, so it'll be fun to talk about a couple of them. With all of that out of the way, here is the history of Five Nights at Freddy's secret characters. Five Nights at Freddy's 1, the game that started it all. It holds up surprisingly well to this day, despite being the first entry in the series. Since it is the first, there's not a lot of secret characters to go over, but undoubtedly it has one of the most important secret characters in the entire franchise. It's everyone's favorite YouTuber clickbait icon, Golden Freddy. Despite literally just being a huge shifted render of Freddy, this secret character went on to become one of the most important faces of FNAF. I think everyone knows how Golden Freddy works at this point. But for the one person in the back who's been living under a rock for eight years, Golden Freddy has a chance of spawning on the poster on Cam 2B. When he shows up on the poster, if you flip your camera down, you'll see him in the office. From here, you either flip up your camera again to get rid of him, or you wait around five seconds and get jump scared by him, which then crashes your game. An interesting thing about Golden Freddy is that was never even supposed to be his name. In the files of FNAF 1, his texture is called Yellow Bear, and the name Golden Freddy shows up nowhere in the game. I tried doing a little research to see who came up with the fan name Golden Freddy, but came up empty-handed somewhat. My best guess is Markiplier, who called him that in his Let's Play of FNAF 1. Even if he didn't come up with the name, he 100% popularized it. Another pretty cool detail is that Golden Freddy is actually present in the office at all times, but his lair is invisible until he is activated with the poster. Golden Freddy went on to appear in most of the other FNAF games, but his most interesting and mysterious appearance is definitely this game. That's really it when it comes to secret characters in FNAF 1. The only other character that I would consider somewhat secret is this endoskeleton that has a rare chance of looking at the camera in the back room, but he's literally on the box art for the game twice, so not very secret, being real. When it comes to fan-made secret character hoaxes, Sparky the dog is easily the most notable from this game. The rumors of this sixth hidden animatronic started pretty early in the game's lifespan, with screenshots of this rumored character showing up, featuring him in the back room door. I remember actually following for this as a kid. I would tell people at school that he was real and that I saw him, which I never actually did, but it did make me feel cool. Eventually, the creators of this hoax, and I'm going to 100% screw up these names, Kodia Bear and Nugin, I think, came out and declared it was fake. This wraps up FNAF 1. The secret characters from it, real or fake, are all extremely memorable and nostalgic, and the same can be said for the next game in our lineup. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is when this series went from having like one kind of cool secret easter egg character to like a million. Okay, not that much, but the jump from FNAF 1 to this is pretty ridiculous. It only makes sense though, with the base roster of the game being such a massive jump from the first game, of course the secret characters would increase in number as well. There is a ton to go over with this game, so let's not waste any time and get right into it. Starting with easily the most popular secret character from this game, Purple Guy. Yeah, that's right, we're not starting off with any of the actual animatronics. Instead, we're gonna talk about the killer of FNAF himself. You might not even think of it like this anymore, but Purple Guy was definitely a secret character in FNAF 2. He only appears in the hidden minigames that show up sometimes when you get jump scared, and even then he's only in 3 out of the 4 minigames. He's there 100% of the time in the Foxy Go 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 minigame and the Give Kids Cake minigame, but arguably his most iconic sprite ever is from the Save Them minigame, where he only has a chance to show up. From this game onwards, Purple Guy became less of a secret character and more of a general story character. 
this was such an interesting way to hint at the killer of the entire series, and allowed the fandom to come up with all kinds of theories about him, even though pretty much none of them ended up being correct. With that out of the way, we can now move on to the secret characters that actually appear in the gameplay of FNAF 2. Starting with arguably the most popular out of this group, we have Shadow Body, also known as RWQFS. F-A-S-X-C. Yeah, I got it, there we go. This shadow version of Toy Bonnie has an extremely rare chance of showing up during your night. Being one out of one million. Similar to Golden Freddy in FNAF 1, if you look at him for too long, the game will crash. Alongside Shadow Bonnie, Shadow Freddy is also hidden away in the game. This time, instead of appearing in the office, he appears on the cameras in the parts and service room. He will only show up once the other withered animatronics have left the room. And even then, it is a rare occurrence. Next up is JJ who is a female version of Balloon Boy that has a random chance of spawning under your desk. She doesn't do anything, but it's a pretty funny easter egg nonetheless. Finally, we have the endoskeleton Endo02. But unlike FNAF 1, where the endoskeleton had a very minor easter egg, this time they have a much more interesting appearance. Something I had no clue about before doing research for this video is that Endo02 can appear at any time during your night, on both the prize corner camera and the left vent camera. I assume that the music box had to be dead for him to appear, but actually Actually, the music box only increases the chance of him appearing, which is why he usually only shows up for people when the music box winds down. He can't attack the player despite being able to enter the left air vent, but seeing him on the cameras is one of my personal favorite easter eggs in the entire series. And that's it for canon FNAF 2 secret characters. Unless you want to count the paper pals, but they're on the camera at all times, so they're not very secret. Easily one of the coolest batches of secret characters in the whole series. Now with this many different secret characters in FNAF 2, there was bound to be even more hoaxes this time around. And oh boy, there was. Easily the most infamous hoax character from FNAF 2 is the purple guy animatronic. Personally, I don't know anyone who actually believed this, mostly because it's a pretty obvious edit of Golden Freddy's FNAF 2 render, but even with how obvious of a fake it looks aside, it has definitely become infamous after all these years. A couple of other secret character hoaxes from this game are this gray and blue version of the puppet, Golden Toy Freddy, and a Shadow Balloon Boy. All of these are pretty lazy edits, but I mean, so is the original Golden Freddy, so I guess it works. None of these were as convincing as Sparky the dog personally, but they're all super nostalgic to me regardless. FNAF 3 is when the secret characters started to slow down a bit, which is only natural after FNAF 2 and how many it added. Both Shadow Bonnie and Shadow Freddy return in this game, but neither of them are very secret compared to their appearances in FNAF 2. Shadow Freddy does have a more traditional secret character easter egg, where he can appear on the far left of your office, but it doesn't crash your game or do anything at all really. A Bonnie paper pal can also enter your office sometimes, which is similar to the easter egg in FNAF 2, but once again, I'm not 100% sure I'd count that as a secret character. Moving on to the actual secret characters, a lot of these are cupcake related for some reason. For starters, the cupcake from FNAF 1 can sometimes be seen in the office on the right side. Once again, doesn't really do anything, but he's there. <laughs> Another secret cupcake character is Shadow Cupcake, who appears on the cameras and is part of how you get the good ending in FNAF 3. Finally, we have the Golden Cupcake, who only appears on rare occasions on a poster on Camo 4. This cupcake did, however, get a proper 3D render later in one of the Freddy Files books. It's just the FNAF 1 cupcake, but with the yellow frosting. Not super interesting, but he sure does exist. If we want to be super technical, I guess I could also bring up the appearance of Fredbear. Sadly, that's pretty much it for FNAF 3. A lot of cupcakes and shadows. When it comes to hoaxes, these also started to slow down a lot during this time. However, there are a couple I would like to talk about. One kind of interesting case I discovered while recently searching for this video is that in Markiplier's FNAF 3 Let's Play, he flashes a picture of Golden Freddy's face on the monitor. It's pretty obvious to tell this is fake now, but I saw it brought up in some FNAF 3 easter egg compilations online, so it did fool some people into thinking it was real. We also have the first Springtrap teaser for FNAF 3, and some people thought it was Fredbear. People back then would mirror the image to create this face, and because of this, a lot of people at that time thought it was going to be a Fredbear game. Obviously we know now this is incorrect, but this was easily one of the biggest hoaxes and rumors around a, at the time, secret character. FNAF 4 doesn't have a single secret character. Thanks for watching everybody, have a good night. But in all seriousness, the closest I could find to a genuine secret character for this game was Purple Guy putting on some dude's suit in a story minigame, and that's it. And like I said before, that doesn't really count. Maybe because this was supposed to be the final chapter and all, so we didn't want to leave too many loose ends, 
But yeah, this kind of sucks. You could argue that Nightmare Fredbear and Nightmare are kind of secret characters, but they both show up on the render section of the extras menu, so they're not really that hidden. Hoaxes too around this time begin to fade away pretty much altogether, at least on such a massive scale. Thanks to dumping the textures of the games becoming more common, the line between genuine hoax and fake jump scare videos on YouTube started to blend more and more until they pretty much just became the same thing. Actually, I lied to you. There is a secret character. That's right, folks. Mr. Coffin himself in the hallway. Give it up for the man himself. All right, with the first four games out of the way, now we move on to the Afton family era of FNAF, as I like to call it. This includes Sister Location, Pizzeria Simulator, and our final game for today, Ultimate Custom Night. Thankfully, unlike FNAF 4, Sister Location has a couple secret characters for us to talk about. All of the secret characters from this game can't attack you, so no Golden Freddy shenanigans this time. But they are still pretty interesting nonetheless. First, we have Yendo. He has a random chance to appear during the Funtime Foxy section of the game. He is a Funtime Freddy endoskeleton with yellow eyes. He later appeared as part of the Custom Night update as a selectable animatronic, where he acts just like Golden Freddy gameplay-wise, just without the crashing. Maybe we do have some Golden Freddy shenanigans going on here. Next up is Lolbit, who might be the character I have talked about the most on this channel at this point. They have a small chance to appear in the primary control module in place of the Ennard Mask. Similar to Yendo, Lolbit is part of the Custom Night mode. It's pretty cool that both of this game's prominent secret characters ended up being part of an actual gameplay mode later down the line. They even appeared in one of those McFarlane bootleg Lego set things together, so that's nice. Not really a secret character, since they do show up during normal gameplay, but there's also a small chance that a mini Rena can appear in the primary control module. I've heard people say these easter eggs are tied to dying a bunch of times in certain sections of the game, but I haven't seen a solid answer for this one. Major improvement from both FNAF 3 and especially 4 in the secret character department. So let's just hope this streak continues. Here we are in the final regular FNAF game of this group, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. No core gameplay secret characters this time around, sadly, which makes sense since there's no cameras for them to show up on. This game, similar to FNAF 4, doesn't have many secret characters since it was another ending of sorts to the series, even though, like FNAF 4, it actually wasn't. All of the secret characters this time around are in the minigames, which makes sense, but it's also super lame. <laughs> Having a few in the tycoon section would have been really cool, but a man can dream. Anyway, starting with Midnight Motorist, when you come up on the last lap, there will be a small exit near the bottom that you can enter. Once entered, a completely different minigame will begin where you play as the Orange Man, who I am 99% positive is supposed to be William Afton, but don't eat me alive in the comments if I mess that up. I am awful when it comes to the convoluted ass lore of these games. <laughs> Later in the minigame, we meet Don't Kill Me Once Again, <laughs> who I believe is supposed to be Henry. So yeah, we got the two co-owners of Freddy's in one minigame. Awesome. I sure do hope nothing bad happens later. There's also a person sitting on a couch in William's house, which might be Michael or his wife. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll just stick with Michael to be safe. On to the next minigame, we have Fruity Maze. This one doesn't actually feature any secret characters in the arcade game itself, but you can see reflections of both a spring bonnie suit and a girl named Susie, who later would become the spirit to possess Chica. Each time you play the minigame, the reflection changes a bit until it is no longer playable. Finally, we have the security puppet minigame. This features both the FNAF 2 puppet and the girl who would eventually go on to possess them, Charlotte. Also, the best secret character in the entire series, William Afton's Tire Tracks. You could argue that the FNAF 2 puppet is also a secret character in the base gameplay itself, since you only see them inside of Lefty on a rare screen. But it's also a major part of the true ending, so not really a secret. And that wraps up Pizza Sim. A more interesting batch this time around, but once again, it was supposed to be a sort of finale game, so it makes sense. Ultimate Custom Night. This is a big one. Let's start small and work our way up. As you may know, Dee Dee has a random chance of spawning during your night, where she will add a random animatronic to your current run that you didn't previously select. However, there is a small pool of animatronics that she can pull from that are secret characters that cannot be turned on any other way. These secret characters are Shadow Bonnie, Plush Trap, Nightmare Chica, Bonnet, Mini Rena's, and finally Lulbit. On top of all of that, we have XOR, also known as Shadow Dee Dee. They appear in 50-20 mode 100% of the time and spawn all six of the hidden roster characters I just mentioned. XOR also has a small chance of appearing on a night outside of 50-20 
putting them in line with more traditional Seeker characters. Next up, we have a couple of FNAF World characters. The following three characters have a random chance of appearing on the desk at random. They are Tangle, White Rabbit, and Bounce Pot. And for some reason, Scott still didn't put Mendo in. What an absolute tragedy. Golden Freddy is also once again back as a Seeker character, appearing in the final reward cutscene of the game. This cutscene is used to show that the spirit within Golden Freddy has yet to rest, and that they are actively tormenting who we assume is supposed to be William Afton in some sort of afterlife. Linked to this is a rare picture of a young child that can flash on screen when you die or flip up the camera. This is Cassidy, who is believed to be the spirit who actively haunts Golden Freddy in this game. Finally, we have one of the most anticipated secret characters in the entire series, Fredbear himself. In order to activate him, you must set Golden Freddy to 1 and death coin him when he appears in your office. This will automatically activate a jump scare from Fredbear, after all these years. You could also argue that Old Man Consequences counts for this video, but he's also in the base UCN roster, so you be the judge of that. With everything out of the way, that wraps up the history of FNAF secret characters from the Scott Cawthon era. There were some ups and some major downs, but this has been a fun trip down memory lane for me, and I hope you feel the same way. Part 2 of this video will come out whenever Steel Wolf makes enough FNAF games to warrant one, so it'll probably be a very, very long time. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I need to start writing a much shorter video for next time, because, oh boy, this was a lot. See you then, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>